C make and make, there are two possible choices for building your C and C++ code, but how do they compare and which one should you choose? To be able to answer those questions, let's take a look at both of them at a practical level. And by that I mean I'm going to build actual C++ code using both of them. So you can see, you can compare the two, you can see the difference. Rules will be simple, I'll build the same code on both of them, the exact same code, and I'll try to get both build systems to do roughly the same thing within reasonable limits. I'm not going to be bending over backwards to get them to do the same thing. And this is going to be the first in a series of videos on C and C++ build systems. So click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you want to hear when the next one's out. Let's get started. Right, I've borrowed some code from the CMake tutorial, just a basic Hello World example that's deliberately been split into two files just to demonstrate how to build multi-file source code. And here is probably the shortest CMake script you'll ever see. So basically three lines. First we say that we the minimum version of CMake that we want. Next we give our project a name, Hello World. And then when we add an executable with the name Hello World, and we compile two source files into hello world.exe. And that's it. Let's compare that with an absolute minimum make file for GNU make. So where you specify targets and source files over in CMake with make, you have build rules. So here we have a rule to build hello world.exe. And on the right of the column here, you have its dependencies. So this tells it that if any of these files change, then hello world.exe needs to be recompiled. And then here we've got the command, uh, the compiler calls to do the compilation and then strip the debug information out of the binary to create the hot final thing. Now makes syntax can be a bit cryptic. So this dollars at uh, here is basically inserts the target here. So hello world, so replace the, in this case, replace everywhere where you see dollars at with hello underscore world.exe. Warning, this is a very minimal build script. It's very inflexible. Do not use it. Now imagine having to manually update the dependency list here. And then imagine having hundreds, if not thousands of source files here. This is going to get very tedious and very messy quickly and it's prone to mistakes. We can do a lot better. Let's fix this. Actually, let's tidy up both the CMake lists and the make file. So on the CMake list side, I just want to tweak it a little bit. I've moved the source files out of being directly inside executable and put them into a variable. You don't need to do that with something this small. But the advantage of having this is that when the project gets bigger, you might have some files that only need to be included on some platforms, like say some Windows specific files or Mac OS or Linux specific files. And by doing it like this, you've already got it all set up and ready to go for that. On the make file side, uh, the changes are rather more drastic. You'll see it's a much longer make file. So to start off, I've created variables for the compiler tools. And the reason for doing that is we might want to use a different compiler later. For example, if we're cross compiling, we need to use a different version of GCC from the compiler that generates native code. So if we set these variables up here and then use them down in our build rules here, then if we need to change it, we only have to change it once up here. Uh, saves us a lot of hassle later. So then next we have a target variable uh, so that we can identify hello world at ASE everywhere. We have the source files added to a source variable. And then you see over here, you see these mysterious dash MMD dash MP. These are command line parameters for GCC that tell it to generate dot D dependency files. So these dependency files are what tell make this object file uses these source files, source and header files. So if any of these source and header files change, you need to rebuild this file. Uh, it's, it's doing what we did manually here in the original make file. It's doing that, it's generating that automatically so there are no, you know, no chance of manual entry errors. To use those though, we need to go a step further. Uh, we've got these pattern substitution things here. So what this does is this takes the list of source files 
and generates the list of object files. Every source file will be compiled to an object file. And likewise, for every source file we have, we will have a dependencies file, which we write to the depths variable. And then down the bottom here, we have a dash include depths. And now this, this loads in all of the dependencies lists. And now GNU make knows when particular files change, which object files need to be recompiled. So we've got our incremental building sorted out. What else have we done? Oh, we have a generic build rule now. So we can compile any CPP file to a .o file using this rule here. And notice that we've got this percentage to mean any. And then down here, we've got the dollars at that you saw before to mean the target, which is the .o file. And then there's dollars bracket or less than that, in, that gets replaced by the name of the CPP source file. I've also created a clean rule, and the clean rule will delete all of the built files. That's if we want to do a complete build from scratch, a clean build, hence the name clean. And the default build rule is now an all, uh, which will build all the output files that we want. In this case, just the target. Uh, but as the project gets bigger, you, you might add additional files that need to be built up here. And they're called phony because an all file won't actually be built by this one. And a clean file won't be built by this rule that's called clean. Hence the dot phony tells make, don't expect those files to be generated by these rules. So that's a lot better. It's a lot longer than the original, but it's a lot more usable. But it's still not on par with what CMake can do. And one of the annoyances is, if you look over here, it's written the hello world.exe, the .d, .o files in between the source files. It's messing up our source tree. Very messy make. Um, so let's fix that. Okay, third iteration. So now we have a build directory. So this builder here says the build directory is here. Subdirectory build. And we have created an objects directory. This is to keep the object files separated from the final generated executables. Uh, again, for cleanliness, so we don't have these cluttered up directories making it hard to, for us to find what we want. So now we need to update these pattern substitutions to put the object files in the objects directory. And, and we'll put the dependencies files in the same place. And we also have to go through and everywhere, because we want to put the target in the build directory rather than directly in the source directory, so everywhere where we had target, we've had to replace it with builder slash target. So we've got it there and all. And down here, we have to do it again when we're deleting the uh, built files in the clean. And then likewise, this generic build rule to build the object files, we want to put the object files in the slash objects do. And when we do that, now our, our generated files are in a build subdirectory and nicely away from our source code, which is nice, but it's still not on par with CMake. You see, CMake can build a debug version and a release version. Uh, with some, in some cases, like with Visual Studio, it can build the two side by side. So let's revise our make file once again to add that capability. Okay, so now we've added a CFG command line parameter. So you can type make dash CFG equals debug or release to choose between the debug and release versions. This code up here sets the config to debug if you don't choose one. So that if you just type in make, you will get the debug build. That's what this question mark equals does. It says only set this if it hasn't been set before. And then down here, we have different set of flags to pass to the compiler, depending on the debug or release build. For the debug version, we add a, de a debug macro to let the source code know that it's the, the debug version is being built. And then over here, this dash capital O3, that enables optimizations. And then because we want to have the debug and release ver version side by side, we do not want to get those object files mixed up we add the config as a directory here. And that makes sure that we can have them side by side. If I show you the build directory over here, 
you'll see there's a debug and a release subdirectory, and each of them will have their own builds. So we've got them side by side. We can make them easily, switch between the two easily. By the way, I forgot to mention this uh, in the previous one. Here, this little, in, in the, the build rules here, I've had a little make dir. This only works with POSIX systems. So sorry, if you're on, on uh, Windows, you will need to use a POSIX shell. And what this does is this just makes sure that the build directories automatically get, get, built, get created uh, so that there's a, a directory for the compiler to write the files to. And that's basically it. So, oh yeah, no, no, I've added an inform rule just to print the configuration. And it also does a quick check that if you type in something other than debug or release, it'll say, eh, can't do that. And you'll see here, you've got this pipe inform in front of all the rules. This is just tell it, I want this inform rule to be run at least once before either of these are called, uh, either of these rules are run. And that helps when you're doing a parallel build. You don't want, you, you want this to happen first before anything else happens. And this now is finally a make file that is equivalent to this. So it's a lot longer, but it does the, roughly the same thing. So all the example code, the, the templates for both CMake and Make uh, will be downloadable in the Kia Campus membership tier, creator or higher. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, on the Makefile side, there's an even more sophisticated template that is ready for cross-compiling. So you can compile for multiple platforms side by side using that one. And what do you think? Which do you prefer, CMake or Make? Let us know in the comments below which one and why. Bear in mind, this is pretty simple code that I've used. It doesn't even link to a third-party library, and pretty much all sizable programs do link to uh, external libraries. So I think I need to do the comparison again with slightly more sophisticated code that at least, as I say, uses an external library. When that's ready, that video should appear here. Uh, if not, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you'll be informed when that video is ready. That's it for now. See you next time.